Hello and welcome to Freedom Church Online. My name is Paul and with my wife Karen we're team leaders of Freedom Church. Each week we bring the Word of God and consider how we can apply this to our lives. If you enjoy our talks, please like or send a message. You can always subscribe to our YouTube channel and you will not miss the next message. Last week we were encouraged from somebody in Florida and it's great to encourage one another this way. We are blessed to have you with us today. And the Bible verse for today is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Amen. Amen. So can I just pray before we start? Lord, we come to you and want to know more about you and your kingdom and your truth. Come Holy Spirit, you're described in the Bible, in our book, Lord, the book that tells us the way, Lord. Well, you are described as the teacher. Would you come now and would you teach us? We've come hungry for to know more about you this today. Would you just speak to each one of us, each person listening? And we ask this in Jesus' mighty name. This week I've had uh, one word on my heart and and it's, well, it's not been on my heart. I've been trying, I've been struggling with it really. And it's the word patience. It might be that uh, I've been learning a lesson in patience myself. The water problem in our home that I talked about last week is still ongoing. But one realization is we have something to learn from this experience. What do I need to learn, Lord? What do I need to learn? As I was saying last week, how do I find time to spend with God when all about is just chaos? Well, my week has been again one of repeats, of repeating chaos, but little more of that maybe later on. The Bible says, when you pray, God listens. Some prayers he answers immediately. Others can take some time. Still others can, it seems it can take an eternity. Well, that might not be the right word, but nearly a lifetime. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, the famous passage about love, Paul gives us a list of what love looks like. And in this passage, there are something like 15 attributes of love. When choosing a partner, a wife, a husband, perhaps it would be good to consider this as maybe perhaps a help, a guide in choosing that important step. But the first one in this list of 15 attributes is love is patient. Patience is also a quality of our character and our character is built over a lifetime of usually walking with God through the good and the bad times. Perhaps sometimes, like me, we're, we're always busy people. Perhaps you're working to meet a deadline and visitors arrive. <gasps> wow. Or, or you are pushed and maybe have a long list of to-do jobs and you're just not getting through it. Things keep going wrong the minute you start something. And what about driving a car? and you're trying to get somewhere in a hurry and the traffic is heavy. It's important that there can be interruptions, and, but it's crucial how we handle those interruptions, isn't it? Some days we can just hate the word wait. In today's world, we have fast food, quick cook, pasta, instant coffee, plenty of places to buy from it when we're in need of it, in a hurry. And despite having loads of time-saving devices, at the end of the day, my list, my to-do list, is just as long as it was when it started. When I started the day, 
and I know I've been crossing things off, but it seems to grow as I cross them off. The NIV Bible puts it this way. It says, how much more will hasty feet miss the way? Or the good news puts it this way. Impatience will get you into trouble. And that's Proverbs 19 too. Impatience will get you into trouble. Oh, yes, it does. So we speak, often speak of the patience of Job. Or oh, this person's got the patience of Job. And, and Job actually said, all the days of my hard service will wait for my reward. I will wait for my reward to come. And that's Job 14, 14. And, and he did. And God also came through in his life, didn't he? Patience begins by changing the way we view things, I think, sometimes. Just giving us a new perspective on it. When you're impatient, you have a narrow perspective. All we see is, is just probably ourselves, our needs, our goals, our schedules, our desires, and the way people are messing up and interrupting our life. Basically, the root of impatience is selfishness. Let's be honest. All of us can be selfish at times, can't we? We must try to see things from the other person's point of view. If you want to succeed in marriage, learn to see life from your partner's point of view. If you want to succeed as a parent, learn to see things from your child's point of view. So important, that one. If you want to succeed in business, learn to see things from your customer's point of view. If you want to be a successful employer, learn to see life from your employee's point of view. Try to discover what the other person feels and why do they feel that way? Patience is a, is a kind of faith. I think I, I, it says, I can trust God. I don't know what he's doing, but I can trust him. I believe he is bigger than this problem. That this problem that's staring at me in the face right now, he is bigger than that. I believe he has his hand in these irritations, not that he's causing them. Brother, I think most of the irritations I've come across, I cause. But he can use them and turn them for good in my life. Frustration says, why did this happen? Faith says, God wants to do. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to learn here, God? Teach me. I mean, Abraham was 100 years old when his promised son, Isaac, was born. Now, I think that's a long time to be patient. We have to accept the truth that God is directing our steps and that trust doesn't require explanations. A couple of helps here. One and two, a couple of them I'm, I'm trying to work on in my life. The first one is, Deepen your love. Paul writes, love is very patient. And 1 Corinthians, I find looking at the opposite way very challenging this. That means when you're impatient, are we being love unloving? I find that quite alarming to think that I'm unloving. When the command for us is to show love, I found that if I'm challenged by a person, then it's good to try and work out why. Why is it a problem to them? When you love someone, you're concerned about that person's wishes, distresses, needs, and points of view, just as your own. When you're filled with love, almost nothing can provide you with anger, or provoke you into anger or impatience. On the other hand, when you're filled with anger, almost anything can provoke you. It takes the smallest instant to push you over the top. Sometimes something I have found helpful is the thought that if there is an overreaction, 
The over comes from the past and it's worth looking into the past to see what the over, what's caused the overreaction. Under pressure, whatever is inside you is going to come out. You might think you have it under control until the explode button is pressed. We need to bring that event, that situation in our life to Jesus. Give him the emotion, the injustice, the pain. Forgive the people involved and release what has happened. And release it to Jesus and trust him. Be patient with him. After all, he promises to work through all things for the good of those who love him. And he will if we're patient and not demanding. Then with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, you can deepen your love for others. Be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. And that's Ephesians 4.2. Second, help develop a sense of humour. This is my second point. I mean, it's so good to laugh at yourself especially when something is getting to you. The Bible says a relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. And that's Proverbs 13, 14, 30. I mean, a relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. Let's chill. Let's look at the problem and laugh at it. It'll help. Scientific studies reveal that people who laugh live longer. Humour is a stress dissolver. It's an antidote to apprehension. It's a tranquilizer without any trouble, troubling side effects. It's a shock absorber for the potholes of life. Someone once asked the president, Abraham Lincoln, how he handled the tension of the Civil War. If he said it hadn't have been for laughter, I could not have made it. When you can laugh, when you can laugh at yourself or laugh at the problem, you can start to live with it. And besides, if you learn to laugh at your problems, you'll never run out of anything to laugh at. You'll always be smiling. And one more thought. When you learn to love people who irritate you and, take a, and you, you take a weapon out of Satan's hand, you take that weapon out of his hand and um, you can use it uh, that he can use against you. It's no more effective. Paul gives us another list, a list of fruit of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. I think the NIV puts it just perhaps a little bit better. And he puts it like this. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, etc. I think that's a lovely start. That's what the Holy Spirit produces. Absolutely incredible. Don't we all want those things? You will notice that listing the fruit of the Spirit Patience comes right after peace. And it's a good you know, question to ask, why does that happen? Because when you have peace in your heart, practically nothing can cause you to feel impatient. But these qualities are the fruit of the Spirit, not the effort of the flesh. I mean, you can't psych yourself up and say, I'm going to be patient if it kills me it probably will (laughs) if it's the genuine fruit of the spirit you will have genuine inner peace and and circumstances won't bother you anymore you the way they used to because the holy spirit is working within you and and if you're depending on on the Lord Jesus to bring that about. He will. He has promised he will do that. A heart at peace gives life to the body. A heart at peace gives life 
to the body. That's Proverbs 14, 13. It does go on to say, but envy rots the bones. So today, let's pray, Lord, make me more patient person. Stop the stress in me. Allow me to rest in you as the notice, as the notice in you in our kitchen says. Help me to remember that nothing is going to happen today that you and I can't handle together, Lord. Just on the journey of our water links, very promptly the local water company came out and fixed the emergency water tap outside our house within eight hours, which is just absolutely incredible. We can now control the water in the house. And a plumber is coming on Tuesday to fix the four water leaks we have. The dishwasher is now repaired after three weeks. And when someone pulls the plug out of the freezer and you don't discover it for four days, simply is a time to have a great clear out of all the food that was in there. Praise the Lord. That's a culmination of our week. I hope this has been helpful in finding a way for you to express patience. It's helped me. I'm working on it. I'm a work in progress. God bless and goodbye.